the best way to get better at programming is to practice. And in this example, we're going to create the very most basic C and C++ program that we can. Basically, just the main function. Now, you can download this file with a link provided below, or you can just copy it along. We'll give you just a couple of seconds. All right, let's get started. So what is needed for a very bare bones, the absolute most basic C or C++ program? Well, you need the main function. While not every file has to have a main function, every application does. And so that's what we're gonna create. The main function has a couple of core required components. The first is a return type. That's simply int. So we're gonna type that first, that's going to be the type of data we're going to return. Then we have the main, which is the name of the function. This is what would be automatically called when we go and run that executable that we're going to create. Next, we have a parameter list. Often in C programs, you'll see two parameters passed in, a count of different parameters, as well as a string. In C++, that's not always there. It is considered optional if you're not passing values into the command line when you run the application. Since we're not going to do that, I'm just going to leave that parameter list blank. Next, we need the body of our application. That's going to be an open and closed brace. That is all you need. If I come up here and run this application, it's going to compile, run, and exit. Notice that nothing is there. Now, in C++, you'll notice that it's listed here as saying exited with code zero. You might say, well, what is that? Well, by default, if we don't return a value, C++ is going to return zero for us. We can implicitly give a value, return zero, and this will do the exact same thing. Now, you might be asking why. Well, back in the olden days when C and C++ were originally created, a lot of times application engineers would run projects at night. They'd be what we call batch jobs. And since they would run at night, no one was there watching them run. So they would return a value and that value would be stored in a file. The system administrator or systems application engineer or whatever their title was would then look at the file from the night before and if they saw the file that was run and then a zero after it, zero meant no errors. Because what was returned was what we call an error code. And zero typically meant no errors. If some other value was there, then they could look up in documentation and go, oh, what was error 73 or 4016 or whatever that number would be. But they could look it up and say, oh, what happened? And then try to correct it so it would run correctly the next night. And so that's why we did it. Now, obviously, this application doesn't do anything, and that's okay. It's just there to see what does it take to make it work. This is good because it lets us know, hey, did we compile this correctly? So this is checking to make sure our compiler is set up in the cyber editor, etc. If you're interested in getting better at C++, we're going to have a whole series of different examples of how you can learn different parts of the C and C++ languages so you can get better at them.